send out our second special guest, former LSU basketball legend who is currently number three all time for LSU scoring at 1,989 points, 2022 Louisiana High School Sports Hall of Famer, men's basketball special assistant to head coach, LSU's very own Tasman Mitchell. Let's go. Let's How you go. feeling today, Coach? I'm doing great. Feeling great. Just got work out in. Got my run in, so I feel great. How many miles did you do today? I did two today. Normally, I do three to four, okay. but I did two today because I was rushing the time, so I had to get to the best podcast in the country. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Y'all heard what you said. Best podcast best in the podcast country. Best podcast in the country right here, baby. Oh, uh, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Okay. Whatever. I'm going to let you win, though, because you know it's just... Let me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Many may not know you're originally from Louisiana. Um, born and raised in Denham, played high school ball at Denham Springs, and then returned to LSU to play ball. So, what made you continue your coaching career? Um, well, I retired. Uh, we had the great flood. Um, I, 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 I played ball. I played seven years of uh, pro ball. I played in uh, Paris. I played in France two years. I lived in Paris, France, my last year, and I uh, played in Moscow, Russia. And also played in uh, Israel two years as well. And I played in the G League with the uh, with, with, with the Cleveland Cavaliers G League team. So in 2016, I was like I was 29. I, re I retired because uh, we had the Great Flood. I don't know if you heard about the Great Flood, um, where it wiped out everybody. It wiped out everything in my area. My mom lost their house. My aunt lost their house. You know, everybody, everybody in my family lost their house. So I was scheduled to go back to Europe to go back. And I couldn't leave my family like that and just like that. So I'm like, we're going to struggle, we're going to struggle together, we're going to get this up together. So, um, and then during that time, my grandmother had developed breast cancer. And uh, she, uh, you know, that's like my heart. So she uh, she needed me, you know, I felt like she needed me. My mom had to work and I wasn't really, I don't have, I didn't have no in-state job. Mm -hmm. My job was just going to Europe and playing ball. Mm -hmm. But when I'm home, I wasn't working, I was just working out. So I just made it, tried to make it easy for the family, man. So I was just there for her and I wanted to be there for her mentally. And uh, spiritually for for her, so I stayed home. And just didn't want to like my girls, I got daughters, so it kept getting harder and harder to leave them. For, I used to be gone for like ten months and only home like two months, two and a half months, and then I go back and I did it so long and every time I left, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you know, the girls are always a dad's heart. So yeah. I um, I just decided to stay home. I decided to stay home. I couldn't go back. My heart was telling me just I couldn't get on that plane and go back. So I'm just here for my grandmother through a whole process, went through all her chemo with her, her radiation appointments, where I took it everywhere, doctor's appointment. And I was just there, just me and her about by her side, you know, with my mom and everybody else had, had to work and do stuff like that. I was just there with her. So my heart just got heavy enough to stay here. And I just didn't want to go play ball no more. So that's what home, home is. So that's what happened. That's why I ended up staying home. And I saw a new coach got hired. Uh, it was the same year I came. I became an SEC legend. So they, they deemed me as an SEC legend. So um, they fired the, the coach. Uh, they fired the coach before the last coach. And um, you know, I sat down. Yeah, we we'll wait. And uh, I just sat down and talked with him. And he was like, uh, you know, we talked when we I see the vision of us moving. I love that shoot. You know, what I'm saying my heart helped me put it over. And uh, you know, we just sitting down talking and. You see his vision for the, for the program, and I loved it, and you know, so I was like, okay, cool. And then I shook, I shook his hand and left, and then he called me on the phone. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, I don't know if you're not playing anymore. I, I, I was already figuring out, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. If I'm not playing, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do? Am I gonna, you know, am I gonna coach? Am I gonna try to get another job or something like that? I didn't even, you know, I had made a little money, so I wasn't really planning on working so soon, but I wanted to get into my second life. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's what happened. He called me and asked me, hey, I don't know if you plan on going back to Europe, but I want to hire you on the staff. Um, you know, I want to hire a former player who knows the city, knows everybody, who can connect me with everybody, who loves LSU just as much as anybody. So, and he said, he said, hey, take a couple of days, talk to your family, think about it. I said, I ain't thinking about it. Like, <laughs> stay here, I'm home, man, thank you. I was just looking, I was praying about it, I was praying, man, tell me what to do. You know, I was just praying to God, like, let me know what to do. Happened right there. I was already that, that same year. I was volunteering. I was volunteering coaching at my high school for my high school team. Okay. And then after that, it got official and Will Wade that offered me the job. So I stayed home and never looked back. Okay. So how did you handle the transition and the rebuild with the new coaching staff and the new player personnel? 
this year, this year, this year. This year, well, um, you know, last year uh, the whole staff got fired, mm -hmm. but I, I was the only one that kept. Mm -hmm. I was the only one, so it was a transition. But it, but I was thankful. I was grateful that he saw favor in me. You know, to keep me out of everybody else that got fired. You know, yeah. everybody else that got let go, he could have kept anybody he wanted to. But he decided. To keep he saw me. something in you. So she saw must have saw something in me, and uh, I just decided to stay. And uh, it, but the transition been great, man. They're they're wonderful people, wonderful human beings. You know, it's good to work with good colleagues. That's, that's great people for one. You know, and then they're also great coaches. So we all in the struggle together. You know, trying to rebuild the team, and it was the team been dismayed for a little bit as far as the past few months. We lost everybody in the transfer portal. Coming in and with the new staff, we lost everybody, so we had to rebuild the team again. Mm -hmm. and we had to do fast. You know, so that's that's the lay of the land right there. Yes, sir. So with that, having most of your players again transfer this year, how do you guys encourage your team when they're faced with adversity? Um, it's not really it's not really an uh, encouragement. You know what I'm saying? We just got rid of some old, want some new. So <laughs> that's that's basically how it goes. You know, if you're not if, if you if you're not doing the job at work. Get rid of you. <laughs> so, That's right. so, 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 I'm not, um, you know, we wish some guys well. They're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful human beings. They just didn't work out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll do anything for them guys that left, you know what I'm saying? They still love those guys. Uh, we just feel like we want to go in a better direction, you know? So, um, it's not really getting a team because it, cause you got to do that every year. You keep recruiting. That's recruiting. You get new guys every year, every year, every year. So, it's like they got to adjust and move on with the fly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Cause see how I play, and see, and, and, and see, and see that's my transition as a coach. I have to realize that all these players are not built like me. You know, they're different. We come from a different era. You know, they, we, we come from an era of entitlement. You know, kids don't really want to work. They want stuff handed to them. You know, so but I work hard for a while for a while I'm at today. You know, and I. I against the best. So I think they should have the same mind frame as me and that's not okay. So what I'm doing, I'm going to have to, my transition into thinking they're me, I have to get out of that. I have to, I have to get out of that mindset. You know, I have to coach them on what their ability is and what they can do, not what I did. <laughs> you know, so that's been a transition because I still have a player mentality. Yeah. Because I still can be playing right now. You know what I'm saying? I just decided to, to shut it down and just, but I still have the passion to get on the court and play and to be coached. But now I'm the coach now, so I had to transition it all over the place. But I'm I am better with it this year through the adversity that we faced with the team. I am a better coach today. Yes, sir. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so going back to you saying you've played with some of the best, you've actually played against some of the best, and you played with some of the best. You played with Big Baby Glenn. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, been playing. Well, I used to. I've been playing against. Him. We, we, we was playing against each other since we were like nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. You know, he was always big. I was big. So mm -hmm. we used to always face each other. So and then eventually, as we got older, mm -hmm. we got we become friends. So we like brothers now. You know what I'm saying? So we went to the same college. Everything. You know what I mean? He went on to the professional. We got went on to professional somewhere else. But um, yeah, man, he's like my brother. I talk to him almost once a week. You know, he's he, that's my guy. That's my guy. You know, you know, you gotta, you know, that's my man. You know, that's how I love him to death, regardless of, you know, who he is and what he done. You know, what I'm saying he still stands for, he still stands for a great man to me. You know, that's my guy. Yes, sir. And what are some of the key factors you would say going in, go into building a successful team? Oh man, I would say character. Character. You gotta want to coach these guys. These guys gotta be coachable. Mm -hmm. You know, coachability. You know, it's, it's hard to. Just say something to a player and they shut down, even if you're not saying nothing, you know. So, and we face that a lot. Guys don't want to face reality on a real game, you know what I'm saying? So it's hard to. So they too busy listening to the delivery, not the message, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm, I'm 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 on that kind of time right there, you know. Like I I just I just think that these these kids, as far as transitioning into listening and being coachable and character, having great character, guys, you want to coach, you make it fun when you lose. Or when you make it, that guy's fun to coach. I want guys that's fun to coach. Guys who's who's dedicated to the game. Guys who want yeah. to get better. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, that's that's what I want. That's what yeah. I like right there. How would you describe your 
describe your coaching style? Do you feel like you set goals, you set a goal for your team that's reachable or high expectations? Like we want the best. Oh, um, uh, I I'm always, I always have high expectations, but I have to have, but I have to get better. You know, I have to check myself. I have to get better as a coach too. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I have to get better. I have, to, I, I have to check my craft in order for me to be better for them. So I'm always looking at myself in the mirror. What can I do? What can I do wrong? What can I do wrong? What can I do right? So, so yeah, I'm always shooting for the stars. I'm always shooting for the stars. I want to shoot to be successful every year. You know, national championship level. Now, I know sometimes it's not realistic based on the personnel and how seasons go. You never know, know how injuries and, and personnel can go. But my expectations are high. I, I want to see other shoot at the top of the pinnacle. Hey. Baseball, football, basketball, women's basketball, soccer. I want everybody to win. You know, that's, my, that's my goal for everybody. I'm a team guy. I'm going to go on That's my goal for everybody, especially for the team that I coach. Yeah, I ain't, I'm not trying to accept nothing but great. Okay. You know? Okay, now. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not human. They make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I'm not saying that the teaser won't go like that all the time, but I expect greatness from another shoot. Okay. What's uh, one of the, what's a big pep talk you give your guys before games to help them lock in? Uh, one of the main things you stress? Be a dog. Be a dog. Be a dog. And when I say be a dog, I don't mean no more food. <laughs> That means be a dog, be be relentless. Yeah. Play with a sense of urgency. You know what I'm saying? Go 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 do the 95 percent. The yeah. 95 percent dive on the floor. Go get this offensive rebound. Make a play for your teammate. Make the best pass for your teammate. Be unselfish. You know, but just being a dog. Don't 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 buy down. Don't buy down to the opponent at all. Keep bringing it. Keep bringing it. Keep bringing it. So that's my message for you know, my team. It's, it's more. It's much more explicit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. be a dog. You know, be a dog because that's all. That's what I was. I was a dog. Well, I don't care who I was playing against. Yeah. I'm, 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 hey, you're not gonna work me. <laughs> you for sure not gonna play me. So I always had that mentality going into my game. So I tried them. So I feel like that can correlate and translate to today's game. Be a dog. Moving forward, I know this year wasn't y'all's best year. Yeah, how would y'all, like, how are y'all going to move forward with that? How are y'all getting those new players that you have come in? I know yesterday Hunter Dean just committed. Yeah. Got yeah. a big time player. Yeah. Got uh, Jalen Cook from Tulane. Mm -hmm. My guy. That's my guy. Give us some insight on those new players and what next year looks like. Oh, man. Um, well, we needed better, we needed better guard play. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need a better guard play. In the SEC, you won't win without the guard play. You know, you need, you need solid, solid guard play. And I, I, I knew I had one person in mind, you know, when he hit the transfer report. And, you know, man, he's already here. He's, he's my recruit. Mm -hmm. He's from out my way, where I'm from. So he was my recruit. He was here first as a freshman. And, Jay. and uh, Jalen Cook, man, uh, Will Wade, and, you know, uh, Will Wade, so that Will Wade didn't see fit for him to play, you know, because he, he, wasn't, he wasn't quite ready then. But he was a development piece that we could have kept around okay. and we should have kept around. So uh, you know, um, he went to so he went to Tulane, which was the best best option for him. Mm -hmm. So he was able to develop and become the stud that he is today, and come back home. You know what I'm saying? Then we got Carlos Stewart from back home too. So my thing is, long story short, I want to bring the Louisiana guys who would mean something to yeah. them. Who know what the three letters mean? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We play for the we play for the state and the city, not for yeah. not for just themselves. Mm -hmm. So maybe that 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 that, that energy and that passion can put into the other teammates that's not this is just not from here but they want to feel it you know what I'm saying so uh yeah we got we need better guard but we got better guards by Jordan Wright from Vanderbilt he's from here too he's from here as well um you know, Will Baker you know, Will Baker he's he's, uh, he's he went to UT first and then went to the bottom from the bottom seven footer and pick and pop shoot the ball a little bit and uh Hunter Dean uh Hunter Dean was at oh, was, a, was a great addition he's gonna bring balance and substance to our team okay. he's a veteran you know he knows what the, he knows exactly how to play, and he knows his role. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, you know, whatever role you have, be a star, be a star in your role. So yeah, so so that's so, so I think our roster has really really upgraded. You yeah. know, we got the top five transfer portal recruiting class right now in the country. Wow. So we got we got to be so. But last year, last year season taught us a lot about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, through adversity, you can still learn a great thing. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of adversity, so that's when I check myself as a coach, like, hey, what am I doing wrong? Is it something that I can do? Is it something I'm doing for my, for my staff? Is it something I'm doing for my team? So one thing about me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the biggest critic of self. 
And uh, yeah, so last year, last year taught us a lot of what we don't want. You know, what we don't, what we don't need. You find out what you don't want, what you don't need. Yeah. And the guys, the kind of guys you want to coach and be a part of LSU. So yeah, so that's 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 it right there. Next year's looking. Next year's looking. Next, year's, like so. next year's looking better. Like I say, everything's a process, but just having the personnel mm-hmm. is ten times better. Going back to what you were saying uh, about Jalen Cook, uh, he wasn't as developed. How do you help your players develop when you feel like they're not there? They're transitioning from high school. They're in a new ballpark now. It's college. Well, see what I think. What I think. How you help a kid develop? I think you gotta first and foremost. See, people think it's on the basketball court. First and foremost, I think you gotta develop that mentality. Mm-hmm. You know, like talk to somebody, like see where you're at, what's your mind frame, what's your goals for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, like mental health is real. Yeah. A lot of kids can't develop because nobody's really attacking their mental health and asking them, are you okay? Are you fine to be in court? What you going, what's going on at home? You know what I'm talking to you, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, 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 so that was a part, so that's, that's a part of development for me. See where their mindset at. And Jay McCook had a chance to, 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 to mature mentally, and that's when his game took off. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so that's what I want to do. That's what that, that's how I help kids develop, man. Just basically because I'm because I'm like a player. You know, I'm still like a player. You know, I wear the same shoes. I wear the same. You know, I kind of wear the same clothes. But I'm just, probably flies coach. Well, that's what I'm talking. About. You know what to say. Come you know on. What to say? That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking. About. But yeah, so so like I say, that's 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 how I help them develop. You know, just just kind of instill what I was called. How I was brought up, you know, but I know it's different, but still some of the same stuff still correlate to today. So I try to help them develop mentally first. What you, what you want to do? You want, you want to work, so you really want to work. Really so, so you mean to tell me you're not going to waste my time? You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, and I don't want to waste yours. You know what I'm saying? So let, let, we all got the same kind of goal. You want to win. You want to get to the next level. So it's work, you know? So that's that's what I, that's how I want to develop their mental health. Develop their mental health. You know, a lot of you never know what these kids are dealing with. That's why they can't step forward, and they also can't step forward because they haven't talked about it yet. You know, once you let that burden go off your shoulders, so the sky's the limit. What's the team pregame workout song? Um, I oh, man, uh, some young boy. Man. I, I, they, they love young boy. Young boy, why be? And I, you know, probably, you know, I don't know what young boy. That's a team. That's, that's but it used to be. HD for president, bow, bow, bow. Oh, okay. You play that, you play that, you play that, you play that, you they get the, you know, so they get the dancing and stuff. Whoa, oh, you know what I'm saying? They get the jig, they get the jig a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, that's what they, yeah, yeah, they get the jig a little bit, HD for president, some, uh, some stuff like that. You know, it just, just you know, it, it just sound good, and again, they all can, they all can vibe off yeah. of them, get loose and stuff like that. You know, I even get loose like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm from there, I'm from there, I'm from there, so. I know all that, you know. So yeah. yeah. So that's 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 that's, that's, a, that's a straight free game from the like, like HD president. Mm-hmm. Bow, bow, bow. That's bow, always, bow, that's bow. always that's always gonna be that's always gonna be it. Okay. So now when I come to the games and, I, and y'all win, I'm gonna hit that. Bow, bow, yeah, bow. Yeah, you gotta hit that. Bow, bow, bow. Hey, I'm gonna get you. Black men don't fall short. Just to list a few. 2006, you were SEC all first yep, freshman team. Yep. Uh, 2009, you were. SEC first team. First team then I, the first first team on SEC, 2010, or second team on SEC. Mm-hmm. And yeah. also in 2010, you got your LABC yeah. award mm-hmm. for the Pete Maravich Player of the Year. Yeah. So just listing a few of those, what was one of your favorite, most exciting college games? Oh, yeah. Um, just one. You can um, give me a few. Well, well, well the, but the most exciting was my freshman year. Freshman year? When we, when we, uh, of course, we went to the final because I went to the final four my mm-hmm. freshman year as well. And that was a huge accomplishment because I was a freshman and I was just out of high school, so yeah. I went to National State. But uh, beating Duke, beating Duke University, beating JJ Reddick, and then sending them home, man. Yeah. And, 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 then, and then going to the final four. And then, uh, and then and then going to the final four, that was, that, was, that was exciting because we did it in front of our family. Our moms didn't stand with it, was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So our moms didn't stand my mom, my grandmother, my stepdad, everybody, my father. Everybody was in there, everybody was in the stands. So we were, the, all me, be baby, be baby, mom, everybody, Tyrus's mom, and everybody was on, was, it, was at home. So that was my most exciting game. Mm-hmm. My best college game was probably Mississippi State in okay. 2009. I dropped 43 and 15. Yep. 
yeah, mm-hmm. I was in the laws in the soul. The goal, the, the goal was bigger than those shit. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? I was getting talking. <laughs> work, you know, like, no matter what they wanted, what he needed, and you know, and then I was tired, I was tired of my sitting on my head coach, uh, Trent Johnson, I was tired, and I was like, oh shit, I don't know if I go no more, he said, come on horse, come on horse, I need you, come on, horse. I need you, I said, I, I got you, so, we went over time, from 43 and 15, oh, yeah. right on, on the road, oh, wow. silenced the whole crowd, mm. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. It was a special moment. I was, that was one of my best as far as scoring games. Scoring an all around game. I had 43 and 15 rebounds, probably like six assists. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was on. Oh, you was on fire. I was on fire. <laughs> fire. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I was on fire. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to close us out. Would you let them know who's running the game? I'm T. Mitch and I'm running the game. That's right. I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it on top of perseverance. You know okay. I'm going to do it on top of perseverance. I'm going to do it between tenacity and perseverance. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go right here. I'm going to sign it right here. I'm not look. I, I'm not in. I'm, I, look, look, I'm not in my own race. I'll be on my own pace. I'll be. I'll be, I'll be running. Look, I'll be running my own race. You know what I'm saying? I'll be running my own race. I'll run. Nobody. You get out there. You you fly. And you're by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You fly. You by yourself. But it was a pleasure and honor. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me. Thank you for wanting to have Thank me. Thank you for taking the time. No problem.